Hey everybody, it's Gavin, and today I'm gonna show you the secrets of advanced Lightroom masking. The Lightroom masking has come so far in the past year, and this has actually been a huge feature improvement in Lightroom. And I'm gonna be totally honest, because you guys don't like it when I pull punches. Lightroom is now miles ahead of Capture One in terms of what it can do with kind of these auto selections. And I'm hoping as we come into 2023, that this will bring opportunities for, for phase one to get moving on Capture One and keep that competition going because that is good for all of us no matter what. When I made the Elegance 4-pack early this year, it took advantage of the new AI masking feature. But actually some things have improved and changed since then, so I've been kind of doing updates behind the scenes. And in doing so, I was realizing, wow, this has gotten even better than it was. I'm gonna start all these photos from raw files and just kind of show you my process, but our emphasis is gonna be on what we can do with the masks. And if I am using masks in presets, it'll be from the Elegance 4 pack, which the latest update that I did this week is 4.3 that has all the latest things. And I'll, I'll show you why, but I'm also gonna show you how to make these masks manually if you want to. So let's actually go in here. So the first thing I would do with something like this is, do a develop preset. So let's do something like HDR Waterscape from Natural HDR 4. Now, what I wanna look at though is this sky. So I'm gonna crop this a little bit and I'm gonna do a manual mask for purposes of illustrating something to you. What we're gonna do is the mask intersect. The mask intersect, you may have played with before. Sometimes it confuses people. It's not really self-explanatory, but it actually is very easy. Let's go right up here to masks and we're just gonna pop in and add a new mask. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna do a select sky. The AI masks have gotten really incredible. And now when you save them or copy them to other photos, when you put them in a preset, you don't actually even have to uh, manually update the mask. It just, the AI just does it. So that's made elegance masks way easier because there's no longer like you apply the mask and then update the AI version. You just apply it and boom. Okay, so here is our mask right here that we made. Here's what it reflects, right? Uh, white reveals and black is the concealed area. Now. Here is what's defining that mask right now is sky, okay? So we could add, we could subtract, all this kind of stuff using any of these. If you look down here, the AI masking is really good, but you can see over here where we have more contrast, there is distinct lines between these trees and stuff. But over here, it kind of blends in down to the water because it can't quite tell the difference. And it currently has no setting. So I could go into here, for example, and say, well, let's put uh, the, the bland sky fixer or something like that. These are the actual local adjustment brush presets from Elegance 4. And there's also a few default ones from Lightroom and things like that. Or we could just manually adjust the sliders, select our mask, just like in this kind of new layer based system that I'm loving. And let's go like this. I like to do this to test to see how good my mask is. I've gotten like minus three exposure. Obviously this is horrible, but what you can see if you look at this and if we zoom in is how the mask combine and where it transitioned. Now you can see that that transition isn't perfect. And what happens is that can look a bit unnatural. So let me select the mask again and let's do something a little more realistic, for example, like the bland sky fixer combination. Mask off, mask on. Now I could tweak with this a little bit. I can make it a little warmer, cooler. Uh, the, you know, the brush kind of got me there, but I want to put a little bit of warmth to go with the overall theme. Okay, fine but this transition still seems a little cut off. This may be a problem you've seen with masks. When we're in Photoshop and we're burning and dodging and using brushes, it's manual, it's slow, but we have a lot of control. And that's why my best images, I still take time to go into Photoshop with. But here in Lightroom, we can refine this substantially. And I'm gonna show you right now. If I right click on my mask, you can say intersect mask with, and then you can select any of the options, select sky, select subject. So what it's really doing is it's making a secondary mask. And in this case, I'm gonna define the main mask, which is my sky, the AI sky. But on top of that, I'm gonna put a linear gradient. And you can see it added a linear gradient on top. Now, just like always in Lightroom, I'm gonna click and drag the linear gradient, right? So where I start is the start point. And now I can move it around, right? I could go up, I could go down, I could change the feather by dragging the main lines here closer or farther apart. But the bottom line is here, I can do this nice gradient mask and I can decide where I want it to come down. The beauty of this is I get the same mask and I just wanna emphasize this. Here's my AI sky mask. I then adjusted the settings here with a little bit of manual and a little bit of elegance four. 
And then I added the linear gradient, right? And so I can select any of these. I can edit any of these. It's going to show me, hey, this is what this mask is. Now this linear gradient's on top and it's limiting it, right? It's intersecting the bottom mask with the linear gradient mask. So it's effectively removing a little bit of it. Now, just to make sure you're aware, all of these are just ways to modify the mask. So if I right click and say intersect mask with a linear gradient, I can get a similar result by, for example, using add or subtract. But whereas this is an AI sky mask, I intersect the gradient and you can see that the limit of that intersection is wherever the original mask was. For example, if I did add mask and then did a linear gradient and drug down, I could actually be extending the mask past where the original AI mask was to get a different type of feathering. For example, if I wanted to feather that effect that look down into the water with the warmth. The point here is you can mix this up however you want, but I'm gonna actually delete this because I don't want it spilling over into the water and I'm gonna use our intersect mask that we started with because for this kind of thing, I find it tends to work really well. The beauty of this is now look, if I turn the main mask on and off, you can see we're enhancing the sky, but there's no hard edge where it meets the horizon. So here's an image, cool expression, cool image, but obviously the light isn't great here. Okay, so I'm just gonna develop it from the raw, right? Let's go to something like Portrait 100 from Filmist. I'm gonna push my exposure up just a little bit because it's a little dark. But now we're kind of losing that background. And here's where I can come in and just do a combination of masks. So I'm gonna go straight to Elegance here so I don't have to build all these manually. And I'm just gonna mouse over the different portrait combo masks that are in here and let's do something like Portrait AI Beauty. And now let's look at what's happened here. We have a behind subject, a subject, and a foreground, and it just applied all those masks together. And so I've done a lot of updating in the latest version to really kind of refine this process and to use some of these new techniques I'm showing. This is how you want to use masks. Whether you're making your own presets or whether you're using something like My Elegance 4-Pack, this is how to make masks. Because look at what we started with. The radical transformation here happened really in about two or three clicks, and that's all you needed. AI Deep Combo also works good right here. And here's the beauty now in the latest versions of Lightroom. When you apply any develop preset that's designed for it, and all of these are, you can now control the intensity. And this is amazing, because this doesn't just work for these develop presets, it's working for these mask local adjustment presets. So I can take that preset that I just applied and now control it and get exactly the look I want. So I can dial it back and say, no, it's a little bit too intense. Let's dial it back to like 60% and call it good. And we just get this amazing result so quickly. Here's an image here and we've got a little bit of skin showing. Okay, now our skin is not perfect. This is where I would come in and what I would actually do is do a, a, a general preset, first of all, just to develop it, right? So I might go to something like Belladonna or Filmist and just, just find a preset. So let's do something gentle like Clear Model from Belladonna. But we still have some stuff going on with the skin. It's kind of darker on the bottom. What I'm actually gonna do here then is I'm gonna go to this new Portrait AI Glamour combo. And again, it's just a combination of masks. But here's what happens when you save your masks into presets. And this is what you should be doing as you find things that work. We have a subject mask, a behind subject mask, a foreground softener, and then we have an only subject low area softener. So this is softening even more the legs and things like that. So let's look at what we transformed here with two clicks. We went from here, we applied the develop preset and this, and we soften it up. The beauty is now we can control all of these. We can turn it up, we can turn it down. It's really an amazing thing to be able to apply five masks at a time using a develop preset and then turn all of those up and down simultaneously with a slider. And you can do this if, if you make your own masks and then save them on a preset. You can use, do this if you're an Elegance 4 user and you already have all the presets that I make in there, but it allows this hyper heightened level of control that is, is honestly pretty amazing. Here's one here that I've already done developing on, but I wanna do a little more on the sky, right? So let's go in here and say, okay, I wanna do uh, a sky, let's do something like a boring sky fixer. I want something that brings some, oh, this kind of brings some color into my sky, right? Okay, so let's click this and I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Let's see if we can control it. I think it's a little too red. So I'm gonna turn it up, but then I'm gonna go to my mask and you can see it did an AI sky. I can make it bluer, I can lighten it up. Don't be afraid to play with those sliders, right? So it fits the theme and here's our mask. Looks good, but watch what happens if I 
modify this. I'm going to intersect this again with a linear gradient, okay? And just going to drag it down here. Look what happens. Instead of that instant cutoff, we have this gradual cutoff. That, now note that the new Sky AI Gradual and Elegance 4.3 will do all this automatically, and then you can just adjust the gradient as needed. I'm just doing this manually so you guys can really understand like what's going on behind the scenes. Roll off is super important in photography. We talk about shadow roll off, highlight roll off, because the roll off keeps our eye from snagging. If the roll off is wrong on things like where lines intersect, if you get artifacts at the edge of trees, if you have bad roll off in the shadows or the way that you've mixed light or on someone's cheek or in a landscape, what it does is it, the eye drags on it. It snags the viewer's eye and so they're not led through the scene the way that you, the image maker, envisioned. So let's go to something, hmm, let's go to Fuji 400H. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a preset on it and just so it looks good. Now you can see though on this portrait, it's nice, we have a strobe, but the way the light is, there's quite a bit of brightness in the background. So really, I probably should have keyed her a little bit more, darkened my background a little more by putting a little more light from the strobe on her. But right now, I'm focused on making a good portrait. What I'm gonna do is you can do two things. Let's go in and make a select subject, okay? So it's gonna AI select the subject, and now you have an AI selected subject. This is just a few steps, all right? Let's go to our mask and invert it. So if we invert the mask, now instead of the subject, we have the background. Now this is better for general purpose things than doing sky. Sometimes you wanna select the sky, and if you have a sky, that's great. But if you want the opposite of your subject, select subject and then invert. Because if you did a sky on this one, it would say there's no sky, and the AI would fail on this, particularly if I saved it into a preset or something like that. And the power of masks doubles when you get them into that preset, because now you can turn them up, you can turn them down, you can combine them in a single click. You can see here that I've darkened the background. Okay, so let's darken our background. This is too much, I know, but watch what happens. What happens if you darken a background too much? Well, it, it's a cutoff. The eye snags on it. It snags and drags, and it, normally then, if I'm darkening the background, I might only go like a half a stop, and then I might do shadows and highlights and just kind of mix things up. Realistically, I would use one of the presets. I'm just doing this manually to show you guys how to do it. Look what happened here. We've dropped it to about mm, a, a stop. It looks a little unnatural though. It's kind of too far because it, it cuts off too quick, right? It just doesn't quite feel real. Watch what happens though when we do this. I'm gonna go again to intersect a mask, okay? Intersect, radial gradient. This time I'm gonna do radial, watch what happens. I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna do here. So now we're intersecting the mask, but something's not right. I'll tell you what, we need to invert it. So we made a radial gradient, but we want it to work in reverse. So I'm gonna uninvert it because it was pre-inverted since this original mask was inverted. Now it's darkening the edges. So not exactly a vignette because we were just darkening the background and not touching our subject. But what we did is we kind of converted this to a vignette by adding a gradient. We're still not touching our subject no matter what we do. What we are doing is we're adding a fade off, right? You can see here's our subject selection and here is this soft feathered radial that I just added. It looks more intentional and you can move that gradient around, that radial around to get exactly what you want. So what this is doing, let me delete these just like this. I'm gonna go back to zero and I'm just gonna show you how you can do this in one click. I've built a preset that has the optimal conditions for all of this and it's right at the top of the new Elegance 4.3 called AI Magic Vignette. So watch what happens. Boom. It's gonna run both AI Vignette and this. And if I click it, I can now put the exposure wherever I want. I can click the radial gradient. It's already been built for me and I can just move it around. I can change the size to get it exactly the way I want and just spend a couple seconds tinkering with it. And there it is, okay? So you can do it manually or you can do it as a preset, but look how much difference the mask intersect is making. Lightroom still doesn't replace Photoshop. You can still do actions. You can still do blending. You can still do atmospheric things that you simply can't do in Lightroom. Photoshop is still a pixel level, level editor. There's videos on this channel about when you should use Photoshop, when you should use Lightroom. I'll put a link to one in the description so you guys can check it out. Lightroom is absolutely better at some things than Photoshop. So my general work show is that workflow is in Lightroom or something like it, like Capture One. But in this case, you can only do this in Lightroom, okay? 
That's my base workflow, my drawing out dynamic range, working with the raw file. My best images, I still go into Photoshop and I've showed you guys this because I can always take an image into Photoshop and do manual refinements better. But I don't go to Photoshop for these AI automatic refinements generally. Yes, I use actions. Yes, I use things to build complex layer combinations like Blackroom, like Loomis, things like that, like Emulsion to get my platinum looks. But in Lightroom, I can do all of this with just this basic raw alien interface. And the beauty is if I like it on one image, I can now copy this. I could say, hey, I like how this portrait looks with my magic vignette. I'm gonna copy that to all 20 of these similar images. If we go back to the the glamour mask we did, right? We did the portrait AI glamour combo on this here to soften this up. And we can adjust any one of these, but all the layers are already named. There are four different masks going on that all occurred with a single click. So I can just click those, modify them, or modify my base develop settings to get a combination between them from here to here. This is why I spend hundreds of hours developing tools to make me efficient. And of course, making those tools so that you guys can use them as well. But you can also make your own things that just work for you. You can save your own presets. The key, and I'll tell you a secret to getting these to work, you have to test them on multiple images. You don't just say, oh, this works great on this image, I'm gonna save it. Because then you go to an image and you say, hey, I thought this worked really great, but there was something in it. So when I develop a preset, whether it's masks, whether it's develop presets, whether it's capture one styles, I do testing across all these different images to say, no, I want this look, but does this look look like this look when I put it on a completely different kind of image? And then I balance back and forth between those. And if we're talking about packs like Filmus or something like that, where we're going for, for example, the portrait or the nature look, sometimes that going back and forth is hundreds of times until I get a balance between them. Use things like intersect to add and subtract elements of your mask to make them more natural and more efficient and save those into presets like I've done in the updated mask presets now in Elegance 4.3 because if you do, you'll be getting these advanced mask combinations that just work beautifully. And if you're an Elegance user, head over and download the update. It's free for you Elegance 4 users. If you're not, you, you might want them and I'll put a link in the comments for you to check them out because I guarantee you'll like them and they will save you a lot of time. Okay guys, I appreciate your support. Please hit that like, that subscribe button. Leave a comment, let me know what you think or if you found other secrets in the masks that are even better that I can continue implementing into these and we'll see you next time.